the wacky world of multimedia J. Okay, weekend project time. We got some serious computer work to do this weekend with some of the changes that are coming to the world of computers. So Piano is going to be totally renovated from top to bottom in terms of the setup. I haven't figured out what setup I want to use yet, but basically today I'm here to make a video about setting this thing up for the eventual death of Windows XP next month. Windows XP is going end of life, and uh, we'll have a lot to talk about while this thing's doing its thing, if I can keep this camera steady somehow, yeah. Anyways, about the computer, this is Piano, my secondary Frankenstein machine consisting almost entirely of parts from older systems, so named because of the ebony and ivory kind of color thing that I've got going here, even the case is something that I originally wanted for Tuxedo, but I didn't, uh, but I didn't wind up using because it was too small and too flimsy. I'm much better with a full-size tower that can, or a full-size tower type case that can get some actual decent airflow. So, the primary purpose of this machine has been music recording because it supports this Creative X5 Fatality series that I have going over here with this big front panel that does both MIDI and analog, so you can even use this thing kind of as a guitar amp. The newer X5s are more gaming specific and not so much focused on being jacks of trades, so this front panel isn't available on the newer one. The reason why I upgraded to the newer X5 Titanium on Tuxedo was so I could get a built-in encoder to output to Dolby Digital and DTS to not use computer speakers anymore and just have a home theater system, uh, have a home theater system do all my sound. So, what we've got here, in the innards are a Core 2 Duo, I believe E6750 or something like that, from about like 2007-ish or so. I have replaced it in 2010 in Tuxedo with the Phenom X6 1090T that I have nowadays, which is still a pretty decent system despite being several years old. <laughs> I did a pretty good job picking processors back then. Uh, see what we're we using an old Samsung square screen monitor from way back in 2006 which still works with no picture degradation all these years later which is one reason why I'm a big fan of Samsung displays a rewritable DVD with Linux on it <laughs> specifically Ubuntu 13.10 that I've installed on this thing before I made the decision that I couldn't do this with Linux so and we've picked up some crappy Logitech $15 speakers that sound horrible like little tinny plastic things like that itty bitty thing right there is the speaker, or speaker, I use that term very loosely. It's very horrible sound quality. If you want decent sound quality from a set of cheap speakers for a computer, get the $30 version which has two speakers like this. Uh, I ha uh, we'll do some discussions on that later. Anyway, so what are we going to do? Let's fire up, let's fire up piano, as well as uh, look at Ubuntu. I currently have Ubuntu 1310 on here. What I intend on doing is, of course, breaking in this new thumb drive to bring over any uh, E6750, yeah, there we go, 2 gigs of RAM and stuff like that. I intend on breaking in this thumb drive to set up a Windows XP final image, because here we are, we're running Ubuntu. And I'm very disappointed with the Linux community, because I hear all these things from Focus. I hear all these things, it boots quickly, though, give it credit for that. Well, what, yeah. I hear all these things, this is with a mechanical hard drive, by the way. Oh, what was that? Well, I actually have these plugged in now, so we might get some sound. We might. Maybe. I am extremely disappointed in the Linux community, because all these years I hear all these great things about Linux, Linux, open source, open source. You can get Linux running on everything, and you can get, you can get Linux running on anything, and you can get anything running on Linux. Well, guess what the Linux community hasn't gotten running on Ubuntu, of all distributions? This front panel right here. There's a generic driver. If we go into our control panel thingy here, and we bring up sound. First, I want to test the sound, too. So you got digital output and analog output. Okay, it's, it's detecting as an X-Fi Extreme Gamer instead of an X-Fi Platinum, which is what it is. The X-Fi Platinum would have the sound on it. So let's see if this works. Front, left. Okay, my speakers are working. Front, right. All right, so my speakers are working out of the back of the computer, but not this, where I plug in the keyboard, the guitar, got two MIDI ports here, you got analog in with a preamp, with an amplifier and stuff like that, and you can put your headphones through here, and I got some really snazzy Sennheisers, because I really got some really snazzy Sennheisers, which are infamous, not infamous, but very well known for their very neutral sound, and stuff like that. But it's nice that... Uh, Nice that Linux works, and it works extremely well, but unfortunately, because the the open source community Front, that supposedly left. 
gets everything working, hasn't gotten the front panel to the to this to these creative cards working, I can't use this as my OS. I'll keep this around in case I get some computers later on. Remember that was that popping noise. I'll keep this around in case I get some computers later on. But uh, I get some computers later on that need an OS, and it doesn't have to have any fancy stuff on it. But sadly, I'm going to have to say goodbye to Ubuntu and Linux for now. Unless I make a dual boot, and that was the quickest shutdown of any OS that I've ever had on this system, including Windows. Including Windows. So it runs extremely well. If the Linux community can figure out how to get these front panels working on the Autogy and the X5 series of sound cards, then I, will, then I would switch this over to Linux. The plan right now is that I'm going to put XP on this and then turn off the internet functionality to knock the machine offline and use sneaker net, as it used to be called back in the 90s, aka thumb drives these days, to transfer files that I record for musical projects and stuff like that. Eventually, I will upgrade to Windows 8 on Tuxedo. And when that happens, I will move my Windows 7 installation over here and everything will work again, <laughs> I hope. And uh, I won't have to deal with this. But anyways, I'll just knock down my card reader. There's a card reader right there in case I need a card reader for anything. I don't need card readers on my main system. Yeah, this, this desk is a mess. I mean, look at all these cables we got going everywhere. Some of it's from the camera. Some of it is from my console recording setup, which I'm going to be losing. Or actually, no. I'm running XP. And of course, the crappy speakers. All right. So let's waste no time in reinstalling Windows XP on this thing, blank the partitions on the main drive, act like it hasn't ever had an OS on it before, and get straight to work on renovating this thing one last time. There it is. Look at all this lovely stuff. It's really too bad that this stuff is finally going end of life. I remember back in college, the answer to everything as far as computer problems went was, get XP. All right, CDs inserted. But I uh, had to do a little bit of work to get the CDs in there because these optical drives are so old. They have dry rotted belts. So let me turn this thing back on here. They have a bit of a problem with doing this. Yeah, hear that? Oops. Well, uh, fortunately these things have those buttons on them so we can uh, manually override it with one of these. Keep that handy. I really should disassemble those drives and see if I can... Uh, get those belts, like get some moisture back in those belts or something. The reason why these things don't work is because the belts get a little too plasticky and they eventually start doing this. Whatever. Boot from CD, come on, I want to install some Windows here. So why is Windows XP such a big problem? Windows XP going end of life. It's not the first Microsoft OS to go end of life. It's not going to be the last Microsoft OS to go end of life. The big reason why XP is getting watched like a hawk by so many techies out there is because Windows XP has been an incredibly successful operating system. For a Windows, for a Windows version, um, XP has done exceptionally well, as my little DVD-R, DVD-RW here does a nice little plug for Linux. <laughs> turn these things on their sides, which is one of the reasons why I got such tiny speakers to begin with. There goes Kernel Debugger DLL. Now, the problem is here, Microsoft finally got XP right with Service Pack 3 and developed a very decent operating system for the first time in ever, maybe. <laughs> so, uh, when I was in college, a lot of people, whenever you had any kind of computer problem whatsoever, the solution was to get XP. Not playing games properly? Get XP. Uh, not running this properly? Get XP. Need better support of XYZ hardware? Get XP. That was the solution to everything. It was a little short-sighted and ignorant because getting XP wasn't the solution to everything all the time. And uh, Windows XP did have some security issues when it first came out. At one point being slammed as being Windows XP confessional, just like Windows 2000 was called Windows 2000 confessional in some circles. Until finally, Microsoft started doing their little trustworthy computing initiative that led to such wondrous stuff as the user account controls and things like that, and, maybe, and Windows not being such a hot and popular target for malware authors or people who want to steal personal info. F dust is already getting on these things. Flecks of dust already on the brand new speakers, but they're crap anyway, so. All right. Now, the reason why everybody's watching Windows XP's discontinuation like a hawk is because of how incredibly popular the OS has been. 
Windows XP still powers about 40% of the world's PCs, so it's still a sizable install base, even though it's going obsolete and stuff like that. Windows 7, of course, is the most popular OS. Windows 8 gaining some ground with some of the changes to make traditional computers work better with the OS, but still not the hybrid OS that Microsoft plugged it as. So, ultimate, so another big problem too, Windows XP runs an extreme majority of ATMs. And uh, many of the big banks won't be able to get them upgraded in time, so that's going to be some issue. That's going to be an issue as well. Some have even pitched to Microsoft to sell them some ad hoc support after the official end of support date for whatever that costs. But I think the best thing they could do actually is just upgrade their systems. Anyways, hmm. so yeah, unlike previous Windows OSs that went end of life, this Windows OS has done incredibly well for itself. It is done extremely well for itself, and many people still view it as a viable operating system, and in many respects, it still is. It's just that when the support gets discontinued, and be actually, no, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Getting, um, when the support gets discontinued, a lot of hackers and malware writers right now are licking their chops at Windows XP, because they know how popular this OS, despite being 13 years old, stuff like that came out in 2001, a lot of a lot of hackers are licking their chops right now. Uh, we had to delete these partitions from Linux. All right, let's kill that. Please destroy the partition and destroy 245 megs. For, that's gonna be something else. Uh, destroy that partition. Okay, that's a 200. And let's format using NTFS. Okay, so malware authors are licking their chops because Windows XP is still viewed as a very viable OS, and in many ways it still is. But without security patches, all the zero-day exploits and all the zero-day vulnerabilities and stuff that would normally get patched are not going to get patched, and hackers and malware authors know this. And everybody's already looking at Windows XP as a hacker's paradise or a malware author's paradise once the support gets pulled. So, basically, it's not going to be a good idea to have an online Windows XP system after the discontinuation date. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one final image of Windows XP specifically for recording music. There's only a couple programs I want to run. Anvil Studio, Audacity, the MIDI stuff that this front panel works with, and an organ program called Grand Org, which lets you download sound sets of organ pipes and play like pipe organ stuff on a keyboard, which sounds really awesome. <laughs> When you consider how big some of those humongous cathedral pipe organs are, and that someone made a program that samples those sounds, and it runs really well as like a souped-up MIDI type thing, yeah, it's pretty awesome. So, yeah, I want to turn this basically into an offline appliance. I'm going to eventually disable the connection to the network. After I save the image, I'm going to turn off all the networking. Actually, no, I'm going to turn off all the networking and then save the image. Got to do it in that order. I, I eventually might dual boot this XP appliance with Linux of some sort to still use this as a regular computer that connects to the internet, but I really don't know at this point. Ultimately, I am going to get rid of XP on this thing and make it function as a normal computer again when I upgrade, whenever I finally upgrade Tuxedo to Windows 8. That's when I'll make the change. I'll upgrade Tuxedo to Windows 8, and I'll, uh, and I'll bring Windows 7 over here, and that'll run all of this stuff. Or maybe someone will finally fix the non-Linux support for this creative stuff. Creative, yeah, creative had lousy support for Linux, but I keep hearing all these Linux lovers out there that are like, Oh, you can get Linux to run on everything. You get everything to run on Linux, too. It's so awesome. Open source is the future, man. Fight the power. Stop sending all that money to Microsoft. And then stuff like this doesn't work. Which, by the way, if there was Linux support for these things, as well as the MIDI and sound fonts, I wouldn't even be doing this right now. I'd be running Ubuntu quite happily on this thing. Anyways, I'll leave that for the Linux community to sort out. Well now, hours and hours and hours later, it's now evening, I have something resembling a Windows XP machine that actually makes sound. So these crappy speakers are actually working. Downloading yet more patches here as I lean back in the chair and just use the darn zoomer. <laughs> 16 of 28. So I was reviewing my footage earlier and I actually screwed up the number of Windows XP machines. <laughs> I was a little, being a little too generous and giving XP a little 
little too much credit. The 40 million that I quoted earlier was from when Windows 7 first overtook Windows XP as the most popular OS or the most popular Windows OS going out there. Uh, that was back when, uh, yeah, when there were still 40 million XP machines. Today that number is down to like 30 million, but 30 million is still a sizable pool of potential victims of malware, zero day exploits, and all kinds of other screwball things that people are going to want to do with this operating system <laughs> once the support gets pulled. So, yeah, if you're still using Windows XP as your main operating system, get another OS or get another computer. Uh, mess with Linux, go to Win 7, not my personal favorite is Win 7, maybe if you really want to try Windows 8, but uh, I'm actually having second thoughts about upgrading to Windows 8, I might just get another copy of 7 for this. No sense uh, sending any money Microsoft's way when they're pulling another Vista with this Frankenstein OS that can't decide whether it's for tablets or PCs, especially when Windows 7 is still very easily available, it's not hard to get a copy of Home Premium. It's really too bad because I'm probably just going to get home. If I get Windows 7 for this, I'm going to upgrade the RAM, first of all, get it up to like 4 gigs or something, or just max the RAM in this thing if it'll take that much. I'll probably end up getting Win 7 Home Premium because while I've traditionally been a fan of using the business version of these OSs, increasingly the differences between business and home versions of Windows have just been... You know, it used to be back in the day that Windows for business was Windows NT or Windows 2000 and a lot more solid and a lot more reliable than the home Windows like Windows 98, Windows ME. That's gone now that everything's NT-ish in terms of how it runs, if that even means anything anymore. So it used to be the case that uh, there'd be... Then of course you had Windows Home, Windows XP Home and Windows XP Professional which had some screwball differences that convinced myself and my geek friends in college to use the professional version of this. And then of course, uh, and since since basically um since Win since Windows Vista really or you know the the business uses are more for like if you have a network that has a domain or something like that or you have some big corporate network or something along those lines. Oh cool, updates updates are ready for the computer. Click to download. Yeah, I'm already downloading stuff. So uh Got a new program to check out. See that new icon over there? That thing that looks like AMD Gaming Evolved? Well, that's because it is AMD Gaming Evolved. Apparently AMD has a new app that they have for their gaming software and video cards. So I don't know. Maybe I'll have to rethink going over to NVIDIA again. Because NVIDIA was releasing some really nice add-on software. Including their own superior version of Fraps that barely affected your frame rates. So it looks like AMD's trying to one-up them. Not only do they have video recording apps, but now they have some kind of streaming setup that's, that interfaces with Twitch TV. So maybe I'll actually be able to use Twitch now. <laughs> I'm going to have to play with that a little later on. I do have a Twitch account. I just, uh, I've had restrictions, I've had like hardware restrictions and stuff. I've been trying to figure out how I'm going to make all of this work. And stuff like that. How many, what updates do we have? To Ooh, cool, we're almost done with the updates. Mostly .NET crap. So... <laughs> <laughs> it's really too bad this isn't a widescreen monitor, otherwise it would fill the whole screen when I was doing this kind of like camcorder let's play type crap. So, if you're still using Windows XP, quit kidding yourself and get another OS, because you are a sitting duck. With how successful XP has been, and with all those people out there who think it is, st it is still perfectly fine, it still works for me! They are going, you know, people with that casual of an attitude towards their computers are going to be sitting ducks when the hackers and malware writers tear this stuff up after Microsoft washes their hands of the, all the XP stuff and tearfully says their goodbyes. So, yeah, it's really, it's really too bad that, that they're doing this, but then again, just, let's, let's face the facts here. The, the extreme majority of Windows XP copies that are out there are 32-bit, which caps the computers that run XP at 3 gigs of RAM detectable. So higher than 3 gigs of RAM would be a total waste. I think sometimes 4 gigs might kind of detect, but all the machines I've seen that do 4 gigs drop down a bit in Windows XP because of 32-bit, it being a 32-bit OS. Not really all that great of support for SSDs, which I'll have to keep in mind, because I, I was tossing around the idea of adding an SSD to this machine to speed it up now that I've seen just what SSDs can do on my main system. So I was thinking of putting an SSD in here. Well, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Windows XP doesn't have very good SSD support. And of course, touchscreen. I mean, I was looking at some touchscreens on Newegg last night. 200 something dollars 
for a Hanspree piece of junk, cheap chunk of plastic touchscreen that does 1080p that I could use as like a Wii U style touch input device for tuxedo and then have two displays mirror one to the other and you get my fingerprints all over the smaller display you know and save and save the big screen for big screen stuff I'm really tossed around the, the idea of making my computers very similar to the Wii U but uh yeah speaking of $200 guess how much this thing cost back in 2006 200 something <laughs> 200 something a little square screen Samsung I think it's like a 7, no, it's not 17 inch, it's 19 inch, because my old tube monitor that it replaced was a 17 incher, so, yeah, 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 I'm downloading updates, Windows, knock it off. So, yeah, indeed, all of this stuff, I mean, if you're still using Windows XP, you're a sitting duck. I feel sorry for the big banks with the ATMs that are still running XP, hopefully they can get that ironed out, a little oversight on their, little oversight on their part, or something along those lines, but, uh, yeah, 30 million people still using Windows XP on the eve of its discontinuation. That is disaster waiting to happen. It's a big, big pool of potential victims for people that would want to do nefarious stuff. And I don't doubt that, this, that any hacker or malware whatever person worth their salt would overlook such a grand opportunity to own so many systems. So... This will be. Uh, I'm not. I don't. I think I might give like. I might check one last thing on April eighth. But I will. I think I might actually leave this connected and downloading updates until the cutoff day. At which point I'll do one final download and then kill the network connectivity on this thing and use it exclusively as an offline PC until I can get a better OS on here. And by better OS, I mean newer OS that'll run the music specific stuff that I've got in this machine. Hokey dokey from Muskogee. Hmm. Actually, it used to be an old country song like that. I think Merle Haggard used to sing it. But, yeah. If you still run XP, get rid of it. And we are, you know, all of this... Oh, wait, we're installing now. So, uh, installing update 9 of 28. I'm not going to bore you folks to death with a video of me talking over Windows installing and stuff like that, but, yeah. It's definitely something to think about. If you're still running Windows XP, get something else because you are going to be a sitting duck when the support gets pulled for this stuff and the folks who want to do nefarious stuff have their field day and the free-for-all begins yeah not good all right as predicted this was a rest of the day project on Saturday. <laughs> Doing some cleaning and moving some things around. That's why the microphone's up there now. And uh, all right, let's turn this thing on and see the results of our handiwork. I'm actually pretty surprised that this thing boots as fast as it does. This thing was slogging so much with the last uh, Windows XP thing that I had on here. I think it's because I kind of had this as like a backup computer setting, so it wasn't really as uh, it wasn't really as focused as it could have been but now it is strictly about music I don't even have lots of web browsers on here so uh, yay I think the plan is going to be keep this thing getting its updates until cutoff day and then just cut it off then figure out what I want to do OS wise with this computer and tuxedo do I want to mess with Windows 8 etc alright here we go you ready <laughs> it's a little loud Yeah, I've been messing around lately with making the PlayStation 1 startup sound into a computer startup sound, and it works really, really well. <laughs> Alright, so, um, Windows actually, uh, Windows actually kind of, um, forced me to reinstall. They actually had the Windows, the WinFast PVR digital, not digital, but, uh, video capture card drivers. They actually had those drivers on Windows Update, so I just downloaded them, and then I went and looked for the program and stuff like that, but unfortunately, I don't think the, uh, I don't think that card supports a 64-bit operating system. All right, so let's fire up our sound font bank manager, which of course now has the uh, 2 megabit, etc. So let's turn that up to about 420 megs of RAM, because we're going to need it. Let's remove the built-in piece of junk, and let's go over to C sound fonts, and let's load SGM version 201. This is for the MIDI, 
This is for the MIDI instruments, for pretty much everything except an organ. And now let's fire up Grand Org. Now this is the program that some of the Lutherans in my church would love this thing. But yeah, <laughs> Grand Org Virtual. Uh, actually, it's pretty interesting how computers and pipe organs of all combinations have turned out to be a pretty interesting combination. So let's see. I think, can we preload? No, we can't. Please select an organ. There is no organ. Um, audio mini, audio mini settings, etc. Panel, or these have to be in a certain, uh, or do these have to be in a certain area? Ah, oh, there we go. Sample set definitions, good. Uh, back to the C drive. Let's load the Berea Church, which is actually a huge, like close to a gig, close to a gig's worth of stuff. Let's just load that one. I think. I think that one's going to be it. That's going to take a while to load. Ooh, lots of log errors. Now, this is actually pretty interesting because you, you, there actually are some people who have built digital organs with pedal boards and like stacks of keyboards and hooked up to a computer with a touch screen. So it's pretty interesting technology. But I'm just going to load this sample set and then we can uh, actually, I don't have Anvil Studio on here yet, so I still got to install Anvil Studio. We can do the regular MIDI sounds off of just the Creative Sound Font Bank Manager. So I don't know why I'm loading this actually. Actually, I do need to move the camera, so let's move the camera and uh, see what kind of... Well, we're not going to get very good sound because these speakers are total crap, and uh, I usually use headphones with this, actually, but well, let's see what we've got. All right, let's see what we have to play with here. It, took, it actually took a little bit of work to get the keyboard to turn on. I think I have to take this thing apart and put some alcohol to uh, some of this... Hey, where's my... Yeah, I gotta put some alcohol to some of these internal contacts on this thing. First, the built-in sounds, just for comparison. Hey! So yeah, pretty basic stuff, and then on the percussion side... I mean, it's, it's a keyboard from the late 1990s, so you gotta... Give it a break there, but let's kill this sound here. And uh, let's now these button half of these buttons don't work right. I gotta go. I gotta take this whole panel off, and I gotta put some alcohol to the contacts because that thing this thing hasn't been taken apart in a long, long time. All right, let's turn on the crappy speakers. Oh, this is gonna sound so terrible because <laughs> those speakers are awful. All right, so let's turn on the crappy speakers and let's control the sound with. Uh, Let's control everything with the MIDI cable right here. That's just awful sounding because those speakers are total crap. Something else I should probably do, I should get, uh, I should actually probably get my old Klipsch speakers that did 4.1, rig them up for stereo mirroring, have a set of speakers here in front of me, and then a set of speakers over here, because obviously it sounds stupid, or maybe just put the speakers on the keyboard, because when you're hitting buttons and stuff like that, so when you're hitting buttons... <laughs> I mean, when you're hitting buttons and stuff like that, and the sound's all coming from over there, it's just, yeah. SimCity 2000 fans are, are laughing at me now, but... All right, let's turn on the drum kit and go back to 000. I gotta... Oh, this is gonna sound so horrible. <laughs> So that works. Okay, so the MIDI works really well, but it's just a serious disconnect between hitting stuff here and hearing the sound coming from there. Or there. Yeah. Hands over here somewhere, but you can't see because my big coconut head. No. <laughs> Alright, so that's that with that. So let's set this thing back to zero, zero, zero because the MIDI track doesn't matter as much. We've loaded the Burea, and it is registering right now on the foot pedals. 
Um, hmm. I think I have to change that. Yeah, this is an extremely complicated program here. Uh, what happens if I hit... See, this is the stupid part, because... First of which, this is... First of which, let me just grab, put the... Put the uh, let's put the little... Uh, there we go. First, and if you can, let's zoom in on this, have to actually pick up the tripod for this. Because this came from a church in Sweden, I have no clue what half of this stuff means. Like, well, I know what trumpet means, but Gedakt and uh, Nachthorn and Subas Octava and stuff like that. Obviously, there's virtual, like, there's virtual, there's the keyboard parts, but if you hit something on the keys... It actually acts like you're pressing the foot pedals. You zoom in on that, hit some more of those. Yeah, see the foot pedals are lighting up? <laughs> so, it needs a little bit of work. I have no idea about, I am not a genius with the pipes. Uh, with the pipes. There are probably some organists that are laughing their asses off at me right now. And, uh, let's see here. <laughs> oh yeah, it only, oh, it only goes up to a certain octave. So yeah, this would be better off with a bunch of smaller keyboards. So that's too high. That's like okay. So we can do that now. That's too high, and everything stops. Like so, you got to be down here somewhere to play this thing. So. Uh, Okay, that's just, I don't know. <laughs> Is there a way we can change what this uh, goes to temperament? Uh, original, equal temperament, what's the settings go to? Uh, that's just, no. <laughs> uh, let's just turn a bunch of these on and see what noise it makes. Oh, wait, these things, I think, yeah, these turn on the other, these ones turn on the other keyboards. So it should be something like... <laughs> higher than half the key okay i give up grand org is a program that i gotta figure out grand org is a program that i gotta figure out a little more before i can actually have a clue how or maybe i just become more familiar with organs in general but when I mean, you got uh, here's the problem you got a keyboard here that's made to be like a piano with like eight, i think it's like this one's got 88 80 not 88 but this is a seven i think it's a 76er this is a 76 or key keyboard. The 80 there's there's digital pianos that do the full 88. This one only does 76. There's smaller ones that do 61 keys, and there's the kitty keyboards that do like 40 uh, something keys. But you've got something this big, but the organs that the samples are made from have little keyboards about this size. So it's kind of like what? So. <laughs> though is that half the time I go to use this I'm probably just gonna have headphones going anyways whether it's those Sennheisers up there which cover your ears and you can't hear anything around you you can actually hear yourself breathe because it like moves like the noise that rattles through your bones and stuff into your ears and stuff or uh, more open headphones or something like that but if I ever want to do anything with speakers this isn't gonna work these things are just bleh. <laughs> I, don't know, I just have those just for projects and stuff like that I gotta get one of my old Cliff systems that I've got, it only did 4.1. Rig that up for stereo mirroring. Put two speakers here, two here, or just have two speakers here. But this whole thing where the sound comes from there, no, not going to work. Fortunately, though, if I can get this thing to shut off. Ooh, it shuts off a lot easier than it switched on. Fortunately, though, I will very much be able to, uh, well, use headphones for most of the projects. I'm gonna do here, but for all intents and purposes, this machine's working again for now. I just have to make plans on what I want to do. Turn those stupid things off. I just have to figure out what I want to do as far as other uh, sounds, is, not sound, but as far as OSs are concerned. Windows 7 versus Windows 8, etc. Anyways, well, this has been fun. Made for a nice weekend project. Now let's get back to some other stuff as well while we're at it. Till next time, this is Multimedia J signing off. Thanks for stopping by.